Hi everybody, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we have the New Wave Power Pro Plus Air Fryer. It's convection, conduction, infrared, and a air fryer with a four and a half inch fan and 360 degree cyclonic action. Supposedly with the New Wave Pro Plus, you can go right from freezer to table. Well, indirectly from freezer to table. You have to cook it first, but the point is you can use frozen or thawed food. There are 100 presets. You can grill, broil, bake, dehydrate, sear, air fry. Is there anything this can't do? New Wave says this is up to 50% faster than a conventional oven and 85% more efficient. They also say the food cooks inside and outside simultaneously because of the triple combo power. I don't even know what that means or how they can accomplish that, but that's what they say. With the New Wave Oven Pro Plus, your food will be crispy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. Uh, I have already used this once. I used it to cook a whole chicken, and I would say that it was tender and juicy. Uh, crispy, sure, crispy, crispy adjacent. <laughs> it was pretty crispy. In fact, it was a little too crispy in some parts, the part closest to the fan, but the chicken was actually pretty large, so maybe it was too big. But today, we are going to try cheeseburgers. With the New Wave Oven Pro Plus, they include a cookbook. They have some things that are more adventurous than others, maybe more adventurous than I want to try. They even include vegetables. I paged through the recipe book and marked a few of the pages that looked especially good to me. The first one I saw was the grilled cheeseburgers. And who doesn't like cheeseburgers? But, and it's not that this looked especially awesome or uh, unusual but it's certainly accessible and easy so I thought that would be a good place to start. Another one that I saw was the Gratin Dauphinois which I think is just au gratin potatoes but that looked good too and also some lemon cookies. I thought cookies in an air fryer well that would be delightful. Right now we are doing the cheeseburgers. The cheeseburger recipe looks a lot like what my wife does, but there is one, well, two ingredients I know she doesn't use. So uh, we'll see what happens. One pound of beef. The recipe calls for lean ground beef. Um, this is 80-20, probably not that lean but I figure you don't want to go much less than that or your burgers will be dry. Although we are adding other ingredients, so I could be wrong, but this is 80-20. One tablespoon of Worcestershire. One egg. Half cup breadcrumbs. One package dry onion soup mix. It says to mix this with your hands and be careful not to over mix or your burgers will be tough. Well, I'll try my best. As far as I can tell, these burgers are mixed but not over mixed. I will make this into four patties. I'm going to flatten these in the patties and place them on the three inch grill. I will cover it with the shatterproof lid and place the heating element. It says to cook the burgers at 350 degrees for three and a half minutes. According to the cookbook, this is menu item number 59. We'll give that a shot. Power, menu, five, nine, start. Oh, interesting. It set it to seven minutes. All right, well, we'll go with the, that seems more reasonable to me. So we're gonna go with the pre-programmed item and see where that takes us. 
In the meantime, I'm going to broil some buns. Just peeking in at the burgers, it looks like they are glistening a little bit. I guess I didn't notice if they were glistening before, but I don't think so. They say that this extracts more of the fat from your foods, making them healthier. But I guess I'm not sure how you extract more fat and still have them tender and juicy. But that's what they say. Underneath the three inch grill attachment, there is a drip catching pan. And I see that it has started catching some drippings. So I guess these are cooking. They are definitely sizzling now. And I do see that the Time remaining has gone down to two minutes. Jennifer, how many slices of cheese would you like on your burger? Zero. Zero, okay. Looks like the burger is done according to the display. I'm going to check the internal temperature just to make sure. It's the first time I've used this to cook a burger, so trust but verify. Well, this one's done. That one's done. That one's done too. Let me check this one again. I don't know why that would be different. Oh, that's done. These burgers are done. I'm going to make two of them into cheeseburgers and the other ones will be just hamburgers. But I'll give them another minute as well. Now this is going to make the dripping pan a little messy, I imagine. That's okay. I will cook it for another minute to melt the cheese. Oh, and while the cheese is melting, I will broil the buns. The buns are slightly toasted, so let's plate the burgers. How does that look? Not bad. Looks pretty good. Not bad. I think I like my wife's better though. Next, we'll try the lemon cookies. Now that we've finished our burgers, I'm going to make some easy lemon cookies. And this recipe is also from the New Way Cooking Book. First step, take a package of lemon cake mix and pour it in a large bowl. Next, we mix in an egg. One stick of butter. I need the zest from one lemon. That looks pretty good. I need the juice from a lemon. Well, a tablespoon of the juice.
says to mix this until well blended. I was just going to use a fork, but I think I might use a potato masher. There doesn't seem to be enough liquid in here. I'm just going to use my hands to mix this. It's just not working. And the, doing it by hand certainly seems to be the more effective option. Using a dough scraper to get the last bits from the bottom of the bowl. It says to refrigerate this for at least 15 minutes or overnight. I think actually I'm going to do this overnight and resume this tomorrow. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today is part two of Easy Lemon Cookies using our New Wave Oven Pro Plus air fryer. According to the recipe book, the next step is to take about a tablespoon of dough roll it in some powdered sugar, and place it in the perimeter of the pan. I thought it would be easiest to use my wife's cookie dough ball gadget. Um, I don't know if I've ever used this myself, but I know that she uses this for her chocolate chip cookies. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think what you do is dip it in water, take a scoop of dough, and pop it out. We'll see if that works. All right, here we go. Water, dough, powdered sugar pan. Seems easy. <laughs> this, is, this is a stiff dough. I guess I'm gonna roll it. And they said to place these about an inch apart. I don't know if it will flatten. I assume it will. All right. First one is placed. So far, so good. I can't guarantee that these are completely uniform, but it's probably my best option. See, that's about an inch apart. And I'd say this dough baller seems to be working out okay. Ew, this one's a little sticky. <laughs> Not quite round either. All right, well, we'll put this in there anyway. I think by putting it in the refrigerator overnight, it allowed all of the dough to absorb the excess liquid. In case, I mean, there wasn't a lot of liquid anyway, but I know that can happen with pizza dough. That's, that's more my domain is the savory doughs. Sourdough and rye, things like that. Yeah, these are <laughs> not quite, not all that round. I, I don't see how these are all going to fit on the perimeter of the pan. We seem to have a lot of dough left, a little over half the space to go. We'll see, we'll keep going. I'm very curious how cookies will turn out in an air fryer. I know it's supposed to broil and bake and sear and everything under the sun, but uh, a little skeptical. Perimeter is full, so we will have to start going interior. 
I think as long as we are allowed to use the interior space, we will get all of these cookies in there, but we'll see. This one's a little smaller than the rest, so maybe it'll be okay if it's in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen cookies. The next step is to cook these at 300 degrees for 15 minutes or use preset number 94. So that's what I'll be doing. Menu 94 start. It says 15 minutes. That's a good sign. I will come back when these are done. I can't tell if they are starting to flatten or not. Uh, it's only been in there for two minutes. I think the cookies are flattening a little. They definitely have cracks forming on the surface. I uh, don't know what this will ultimately look like, but I'm curious to find out. My assumption is that because we used a cake mix as the base, that the cookies will remain at least somewhat poofy, but um, clearly they are spreading out. So I actually, I think these are going to be delicious. We have about five minutes left and the cookies are definitely spreading out. Um, very exciting. They look good and they're done. Now uh, let's just take a look at these. I don't see a lot of browning, at least not on top. Uh, there is some, I, I actually I can't tell. The interior where the cracks are are definitely lighter. The exterior is darker, but it could be because of the powdered sugar and not because it's more baked. It doesn't say to put it on a rack, but they do need to be cooled. Once they are cooled, I'll dust them with more powdered sugar. I'm worried that if I put them on a rack, they'll break but I also want to move on to my next test, so I'm going to try it. They are very fragile. Oh yeah, they're really fragile. Ooh, very soft too. Like, I'm not even sure they're done. Maybe I should let them cool on this pan. This one's a lost cause though. I could try this one. This one just kind of crumbled apart. It's very doughy. Maybe it will continue to cook as it cools. That's what I'm thinking because this doesn't taste done to me. We'll just let these cool in this pan and I'll just defer my other stuff till later. While I am waiting for the cookies to cool off, I am going to start on the next recipe. This is for gratin dauphinois, or uh, potatoes au gratin. This, this is what I would call them. Six cups small red potatoes washed and thinly sliced. So uh, this, I think this will make six cups. Should I measure it? All right. I'm not peeling them. It doesn't say to peel them. It says to wash them. Know how uniform these slices are. I wouldn't say that I fear the knife, but I definitely respect it, so <laughs> I am being cautious here. Okay, this is about four cups. I've got two more to go. One more small potato ought to do it. I could also probably be done at this point, but
one half cup onion finely diced. The nice thing about onion is after you slice it, it almost dices itself. I'm going to call this finely diced. I've seen better, but I think this will be fine. Probably save the rest of these for brat night. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I wish it was brat night tonight. Three cloves of garlic, thinly minced. First, I'm just going to slice this thin and then I'll worry about mincing it. Thinly minced garlic. The recipe book shows a 10 inch square pan. I don't have that. What I do have is a nine and a half inch pie plate. I think this will work. It fits, but it, it barely fits. Um, hopefully that's good enough. Because that's what we have to work with. It's either that or go with a eight by eight pan and I don't think that'll be big enough, so. We're going to go with this and see what happens. I am just adding the onion, the garlic, and the cheese to the potatoes. This calls for a half a cup of finely shredded Parmesan. And I'm just going to mix this by hand a little bit, spread things out. Hopefully things will get coated relatively evenly this way. That seems pretty good. I just happen to have the New Wave induction cooktop as well from a previous review. So that's what I'll be using to uh, heat up the sauce. I will be adding four cups, or not four cups, four tablespoons of butter. Yeah, uh, let's do a, a medium heat. Just want to get this started melting before I add the cream. And uh, this induction cooktop is really fun. It, it, it doesn't take long for that. To start melting so I'm going to put the cream in now Butter is almost completely melted. And then it says to add salt and pepper to taste. Whatever that means. It's not like I'm going to taste this butter and cream. 
cream, but I will just put in a, that looks like good sea salt to me, we'll do that. You can always add more later. And just enough pepper to give it some color. This is boiling already. I don't know if we want it to boil. I'm going to bring the temperature down to low. It didn't really say how long to heat this. They just said heat it. But I imagine it is hot enough if it's boiling. Pour this over the potatoes. says to shake the pan to make sure there are no bubbles. I... <laughs> okay. There's not that much liquid. Now we need to get the cookies off the pan because we need that. Oh yeah, these are a lot more solid now that they have cooled. Lesson learned. My love, do you want to come on camera and uh, try out a cookie? Pick your favorite. Have you tried one yet? Not in its cooled form. I tried a hot one. Okay. It was good. Very good. Worth doing again? Okay, do it again. Okay. Now I'll try one. <laughs> I knew it, I was being set up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Seems like they could have baked a little longer. Mm, the center is a little bit doughy. No, I don't really mind it, but... No, it's soft. Yeah. Good flavor. I like cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you read the text instructions, it says we're going to bake it for 20 minutes and then cover it with foil and bake it for another 50 minutes. But if you look at the menu, it's code number 34. And there's only one entry there. So I don't know what that means. Maybe you pause it after 20 minutes and continue it. We'll find out. It says place pan on the one inch rack and cook at 350 for 20 minutes. I don't know what they mean by one inch rack. I'm assuming they just mean this white or this uh, mint green plastic thing. Uh, there is no, the only other rack I have is a three inch rack and that can't be it. So I'm just going to put it right on the pan and cover it with the dome. Put the top on. Plug it in. And then put in code number 34. Menu. Oops, let me turn it on first. Menu three, four, start. Ah, it does say one hour and 10 minutes. Okay, it has hit 50 minutes. I'm putting this on pause. You can see that the top has browned in a nice way. It looks more tasty. I'm going to cover this with foil. Now I think this will serve a couple of different purposes. One is to keep the top from over browning. And the second one, I think, will be to trap some of that steam that I saw coming out of it. And the steam will help cook and tenderize the potatoes. So that's, that's my theory anyway. I think that's the key. I'm gonna have these corners stick out and just have the lid hold them down. I think that's a great plan. All right, resume. 
when we are done, I'll have the cameras back on. We'll take a look, give a little taste test, and see how this recipe went. So, see you in a bit. The potatoes are done. It says I'm supposed to leave them in the foil for two minutes. And believe it or not, there's a recipe for hot dogs in the book. Menu 98, start. It only gives me eight minutes, so I might need to extend that. All right, look at this beautiful photo. Mmm, that looks delicious. Now look at this. <laughs> Boy. Oh well. Probably still tastes good. But it's like, what could possibly be different? The, the, the photo looks like it just has more sauce. But I think if I were to make these again, I would double the sauce based on this evidence. Well, it's good. I don't think it's supposed to be crunchy though. With this, I have made an entire, a whole baked chicken. And I thought that that was good. The meat was tender and juicy. The skin got unevenly crispy, I would say. It was good, but um, uh, other methods might be better. Or it could just be that that chicken was too big for this container. It, the base, the top of the fan was almost touching the top of the chicken, so it may have just been too close. Uh, I did notice that there was a lot of drippings for the chicken, if, which that was consistent with what they said would happen. I made burgers last night. I would say the recipe that they have was basically the same recipe that I would use for meatloaf. And they weren't, <laughs> actually, for, I had the leftovers for lunch today. And I basically served it as an open face sandwich, smothered it with gravy, and had it with mashed potatoes. Basically, I turned it into a meatloaf. And that was it, it was really good. In fact, I would just cross out hamburger and put meatloaf on the recipe name. Personal size meatloaf. And that, it was a success. As a burger, mm, maybe not. These potatoes here, um, they're tasty, but they don't look nearly as good as the recipe in the book. Um, I don't know what happened there. I, I think the recipe's wrong, because I did everything exactly the way they said. Um, the cookies. Cookies are good. I thought that the cookies could probably have baked a little bit longer. Not, not that they're bad. Uh, they, they are not bad. They, they are good. It's just they were a little doughy in the middle. If you like that, then no changes required. These hot dogs and brats, I guess we'll, we'll see how they turn out. Uh, one thing I'll note, note is that Cleanup for this is really easy. They say that you can put all of the pieces except for the heating element into the dishwasher on the top rack, which is ridiculous because this top part here is like, I don't know, eight inches tall. It wouldn't even fit my dishwasher. And plus these pieces are enormous. There's no way they would, you'd have to wash them one at a time. And it's just not worth it. And it doesn't matter because they wipe out easily with just the rag and water. So don't even worry about it. The cleanup is super easy. Um, other than, is, as far as ease of use goes, it's, it's very easy. The recipes are easy to follow. Um, you don't have to do any setup. You just follow what the menu number is and you are done, more or less. You might need some adjustments. Uh, it's easy to put things on pause and continue. Uh, when would you use this? Well, they say it's, um, it uses less energy and it, it's up to some amount faster. I don't think that's true. I think if, uh, in, unless you're talking about like heating up the oven time, the preheats, you don't have to preheat this. Um, they also say that you can cook frozen foods so you don't have to defrost. In those terms, it's easy. 
but for the actual cooking process, um, not really. It's, it's not any faster, I would say. As far as ease of use, yes, it's easy. Um, if I don't know that I would use this instead of any other appliance that I have. Um, maybe in the summer when you don't want to heat up the house, you could use something like this. It would heat up the house less. There's not a lot of ambient heat coming off of this. All right, it's telling me that the hot dogs are done. I just, I don't believe it, but let's, let's take a look. Oh, well, maybe. Oh, the brats could use more time, but these hot dogs look decent. I might, well, I'm, uh, let me just turn them and see if they are good on all sides. Oh, I do have grill marks. Look at that. I might give these hot dogs another two minutes. The brats could use probably more time than that. But, um, I, and I guess we'll, we'll find out how good these taste compared to a grill. We certainly like grilled hot dogs and brats around here. They smell good and they have those grill marks on there. So this, this might be a decent alternative. Just gonna set the menu again and start it. Uh, I'm not going to be able to let it run the entire eight minutes this time, but um, I like this. I like the color. Um, if you don't have a lot of experience cooking or if your other appliances intimidate you for some reason, this is not a bad way to cook your own meals especially with the rising cost of eating out. This is uh, a nice alternative to that. Um, I see, what, would I, what kind of rating would I give this? It, it uh, I, well, I, I, I do have another air fryer that's a basket style. This has a much larger capacity uh, and I'm not even sure that I would try to do some of this stuff in there. But that's the thing with this. There is a, a wide variety of recipes in this cookbook. And um, some, I would never have thought of a lot of these for a device like this. Uh, but it, it could be interesting to explore. So, yeah, I think I would... Uh, there's, there's no reason... I can't think of any reason not to get this. So I'm gonna give this a five out of five rating. Um, I like the New Wave brand. That induction cooktop is, uh, has become one of my favorite devices in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I would give this a five out of five. So I will end this video and we will have dinner and thanks for stopping by.